by chance, I walked into a place called Tao of Life. And while I was having breakfast there with my chef, Jake, um, I, I, I saw this mural that was so beautiful. And I, I asked the manager, I'm like, I need to know who did that. And uh, she's like, yeah, that's the guy right over there. And she pointed at Ned. And so I said, can you send him over here? Because I have a job for him. And um, while he was doing the mural, he brought one of his friends in to kind of help him out. And that was Sinang. That's how I met Sinang. He just started showing up with Nan to do that uh, that first big piece, maybe later one. And um, once I had made the decision to open maybe later two and I'd found the place, I had gotten to know both of these kids pretty well. And I was like, would you guys like to come up to CM Reap and do like really big stuff? And also, I knew that they could do so much more. But I knew that they needed polish because they were very stuck in a particular style. And I called Yuya <laughs> because we had just worked on this project. And uh, I said, Yuya, would you be willing to come over to Cambodia um, I, to teach these two youngsters like how to become commercial artists because I think that's where they belong. But they don't have uh, a big enough tool set and they don't have the understanding of how to approach it. They're just kids. And so he said yes. The, the biggest thing is that he was a muralist, <clears throat> right, and a street artist. And, I, and I, had, I had four by four meter walls that I had to cover, and I wanted them to be huge, massive, impressive murals. I wanted Maybe Later 2 to stand out and become something that like not, no one had ever seen before in Cambodia. And then we'll uh, forecast, like uh, predict it, or oh, these two will be spectacular artists. They have hidden really good talent. And then he really, really want, wanted me to teach them with my latest skill how to paint a mural. Like a, as an education teacher, art teacher, as a brother, as a family, as a team, you know. Now that I think about it, he gave me every single option that I can be challenged also at the same time. He's trying to make me grow. You know, one of them you know, grew up in a shelter, you know, just, they both come from nothing. I come from nothing too. And that's why he told me because I can feel that they feel, they can feel how I feel. It's a Mexican restaurant, so um, I wanted Day of the Dead, like Dia de los Muertos. And in Cambodia, they have a holiday called Chumbet, which is very similar in the sense that they honor their ancestors for seven generations back. The difference is in Mexico and all throughout South and Central America, they have a day of the dead. In Cambodia, they, they celebrate this for 15 days. I was like, you know, why would you ask a Japanese guy <laughs> to come over to Cambodia to do Day of the Dead Mexican artwork and when he's never shown you for one second that he can do that? And I'm like, because you yeah, literally can't do anything. Uh, what I really see for this place is you're eating in a Mexican restaurant and there's a dead band playing around you. Half though, half the week. Really? I go, wait a minute, if it, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. Because me, as a Japanese painter living in Cambodia, painting for Mexican restaurant in Cambodia, running by white Americans. If not, like, what's the connection? What? Why you Japanese and you painting Mexican restaurant? What? What's the story? I thought that would be easy to be working on schedule, but I probably a little bit a lot in the past half. half. Uh, I didn't spend much time with my students. I was going out and drinking with my new party friends. And then next day, oh, you hang over town. Uh, Yuya, uh, he blurs the lines between work and play. Uh, <laughs> and so it was obvious that he was falling way off schedule. And I'm like, dude, you need to work. You were brought over here to work and you were brought over here to spend time with the boys and they've been neglected and you'll show up and give them assignments and just leave them isolated. And I'm like, that's not what this was supposed to be. Like you were supposed to be with them every day. So I had to buy another airplane ticket. That's my fault behind the schedule, no excuse. So I was, you know, acting unprofessional artist. And then we'll point it out. Oh, I'm sorry. At the end of the day, it, the re end result is 
Nan and Sinang grew so much under him and they miss him every day and they love the fact that he can play so hard but when it comes time to do work like when it comes time to be serious Yuya pins them down pins himself down he's like we're working now and so he can shut off the playful Yuya when it's time to work but when he says we're working now they just fell into line and uh, both of them have told me that they love that about him that he like he could be so serious and like so focused and so like dead on about his art but and then he can turn that off and he can just be like all play the main imagery i spend most of the time to finish the room was uh, the big skull holding the, like a 50s looking microphone and he wanted to do the huge like lead singer and or a huge like skeleton on the left side and then uh, Yuya came up with this brilliant idea to do like a 50s style mic on it and, he, and then he you know he, he put the guitarist on a kind of a swing set <laughs> uh, from the minute Jake well I professed my love to her and she professed it right back and uh, from that minute um, to me it became important that we become committed at the place that I felt her super ancestors had carved temples out to celebrate how beautiful she was. And I wanted Yuya to preside over our engagement because he and I had spent so much time talking about how in love with her I was. And so I thought what better of a person to give us a blessing and wish us well than Yuya. And these two are my student town. What's your name? What's your name? Yeah, name. And then what's your name? Sinan. Sinan. Well, Nan is, um, he, he's extremely talented and he is extremely confident. Uh, and he, he likes to show off. Like he's got a personality that's like bigger than life. And he has a skill to back it up. Older one, then he's a naughty one. No, he joke around a lot and then show off. Big, big time show off and uh, why won't get attention. And uh, the younger one, he spent his time eight years in shelter. He doesn't say much, but uh, he felt for them, you know, feel. And um, uh, Sineng is just quiet, mild mannered, and so polite and so damn sweet. He never wants to show off. His technique and his skill, I mean, maybe that, maybe that uh, is a symptom of his patience as a personality, but the kid can do anything. I'm gonna take you to upstairs. And I'm going to paint a person who play Malakas. And we, and we discussed how the maybe later things should go on the wall as you exit. And then behind the bar, bar counter, uh, I painted the uh, octopus, huge octopus with the uh, old timey skewer diving suit. And then on the right side, uh, trippy looking uh, baseball restaurant master. And then little goofy banana phone hello guy. And uh, pepper and then this side, uh, pepper, onion, paprika. So maybe it looks like a each are related, like a Mexican restaurant, you know, art mask. And then, um, he did the uh, the Lucha Libre wrestler. That painting, like, I walk into that room every day and I'm just like, fuck, that's awesome. <laughs> and then, Lucha no. Libre guy, the referee guy, you know, breaking the wall and then fly out. And I put a Naga tattoo and dragon tattoo. Do you see it? Like, I wanted to put something like a Yuya Yuya ish type of word. Right. And he like, oh, that's cool, Yuya, do it. Tattoo, sure. And I wanted to honor him. And I said, we need to get a picture of him with a banana in his ear because I want to make a shirt. But like, everywhere he went that day, um, everyone was going to be wearing his shirt. And uh, I had all of the people from the supermarket wearing them. Everyone that came to his party was wearing them and everyone at the restaurant 
like the entire staff of Shin was wearing his face. Wherever he went, he had he had like 10 or 15 people that would just like adore the shit out of him, who were, whose hearts were gonna be broken the minute this guy left town. Sinang looks up to Nan so much, and he wants to be just like him, and he wants to be as cool as him. And uh, but Nan really just projects this, and uh, it's it, uh, I'm I'm curious to see how Sinang develops and how that as he achieves his own level of confidence, like how how is he gonna change as he realizes that he's he's got the same power and then he's getting older and he's done more. I don't know. It, it'll it'll be fun to see how he develops. Um, uh, one thing that surprised me throughout this process is that uh, uh, Nan and Horian asked me if they could work for us and stay with us like for a long time. But they will both want to bartend there and there's an apartment on the top floor that they are both going to live in. Everyone's going to ask, like, how did you, who did that, who did that? I'm like, this is your platform to go with me. I don't want them to be bartenders for more than a year. Uh, my hope for them, my, my goal for them, and the whole reason for all of this is that I want them to become commercially independent artists. Before they have to make all these mistakes on their own, I'm, I'm forcing them to follow a very specific, intelligent, creative business process. That's my goal for both of them, and, and, and I've also told them both that, you know, you're gonna get a lot of attention from what you've already done. And I said, the, the more you guys do this, like, like this is your passport to the entire world. Maybe later. Huh? Maybe later. Maybe later, okay. Did you hear that? He said maybe later. He's a little bit shy. Oops. <laughs>